At this point here, we have our user interface pretty much done. What I would like to do next is I would like to show you the data part of things. So I'd like to show you where we are going to be retrieving these quotes from. So that way we can start putting together the models, the model classes, and trying to figure out how to consume this JSON so that we can start looking at the actual text. Okay, so I have here where this lives. So it's a quotes that JSON, of course, I didn't create this, I found it online, and I put it inside of my GitHub. Okay, so it's a link that you can use at any time. Okay, so I found this quote here. And all of this is indeed in JSON, as you can see, um, it's an actual JSON array, because we have this square brackets. And of course, inside we have object for each object for each quote, we have quote that has the quote text, and we have the name, which contains the name of the author. This is what we're going to be consuming in our application here. Since we know that each object is going to have quote and name that tells us that our model class that will model after our data object, in this case, a quote, it has to have quote and name. Okay, so let's go ahead and create that data model class. Let's go to our project here. And I like to organize my code and it's always a good idea. Okay, so I'm going to go inside here, I'm going to create a new package. Now this first package here, I'm going to call say, it's a model, this is where all the models will go. And while we're here, why not add other packages that we are going to need? Uh, I'm going to say controller. I'm going to say, let's see what else. And I'm going to create another one, this one's going to be data, I think those are okay for now. Right. So instead of instead of model, I'm going to right click, I'm going to create Java class. And this is going to be quote, model, say, okay. And there we go. And we say that each quote object, or model object, will have a few properties or a few instance variables. And in this case, I'm going to have say private string, I'm going to call this quote, and private string again, I'm going to call this author. Okay, of course, I'm going to create getters and setters. So I'm going to say command n and get getters and setters and select all of them and say okay, and voila. And look at that. Now we have our quote model class. I'm going to get rid of this because we don't need that anymore. And the next thing now, now that we have our now that we have our model class, let's go to data here. Instead of data, I'm going to right click, I'm going to say Java, I'm going to call this quote, data, as such, I'll say, okay, this quote data class here, it will do one thing and one thing only. All it will do is to fetch to go and fetch our JSON object here, which contains all of these quotes. Okay, because now we will make sure that we are compartmentalizing our code. So that way we know if if this project gets really big, we'll always know where things are. For instance, if you have 100 classes, and you are trying to figure out, okay, where do I where does this application here? Where does this where is the place where this application fetches data? Well, you would know you go to data and look at around and you'll find the quote data. So that means that class is all it does is do all of the work that it needs to do to get all of that information. Okay, in this case, to go to our API, our JSON here and get all of this. Okay. Okay, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to create an array list that will contain quotes, right? Because the idea here is to get each object here. So this will be quote, zero, quote, one, two, and so forth. So I want to make sure that I put all that inside of an array list. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to say array list, of course, it has to be array list of certain types, array list of certain types. So this is going to be of quote objects, I'm going to call this quote, array list, I'm going to instantiate an array list and such. Then I'm going to say public void get quotes. So all this will do is fetch quotes. 
Well, in order for me to get the quote, I need to go and fetch our library first. So let's go back to our app here. So click on your project app. I'm going to say file and let's go to project structure. Once you're here, go to app and go to dependencies tab. Okay, so we're going to actually go and fetch volley and at the bottom here say plus and we want library dependency. So click on that and you have this choose library dependency. So, so we're actually going to go ahead and search for volley as such. Just hit enter, It'll take a few seconds. And there we go. And we need to find volley by dub, dub smash as such. Click on this one, say OK and say OK take a few seconds and Gradle will sync everything that we need and voila. Now that we know that we have Volley set up, what we're going to do, I'm going to create a string here. I'm going to call this URL and this is going to be the string pointing to our JSON quotes. Okay, I'm going to just put it here such. Next thing I'm going to do here, I'm going to go ahead and create a JSON array request. Why JSON array request? Because, because we know, as you can see here, it's going to be an array object. Okay, so we're going to use the JSON array request. Now to simplify this process, what I'm going to do, I already have a class. I'm going to create a class, uh, a singleton class. So a singleton class in Java is a class that allows us to encapsulate all of the properties and, and attributes of a class so that we can always use it, instantiate it, or use an instance, only one instance of that class. That way we don't have a bunch of object instantiations floating around in memory. That, that allows our application to only use one instance of that class in our entire application, making things more efficient. So what I need to do, so let's go to our controller here. I'm going to right click say new let's go to Java class I'm gonna call this app controller and this is going to extend from application so Android application so click on that I'm gonna say okay and there we go and I already have the code so I won't bore you uh, coding it myself here say so I'm gonna just paste it all in here and say okay for all the imports so there we go. So now we have our app controller here, which extends application, right? So what it does does again, it just creates one instance of this whole class. We can actually create different classes or different interfaces inside or different methods inside of this class here that we want to make sure that whenever we call it, we are only going to instantiate once, just get the reference once in our all in our application. But you notice here we have this add to request queue, add to request queue, to overloaded methods there. Okay. So here we are actually using, so here we're actually creating uh, methods that we use with Volley so that it, that way we can start extracting our JSON objects from remote servers. Okay, that's all this is. Now for this to work, we actually need to make something, another change. We go to our manifest here, and then we are going to inside of our application because remember we want to make that this app controller controls the entirety of the application. So it's so inside of our application tag here, say Android name as as such, and we're gonna look at that right away. We have controller that app controller. So even our IDE understands like okay, we are now giving access. We are now giving all the entire control of the our application to the app controller because it will know what we need to do. Yes, okay, so I'm saying enter and there we go. So that's a very important step because now we are pointing to our app controller class that we created. All right. Very nice. So I'm going to save get get out of there and you notice now it's being referenced properly. Okay? Very nice. So we've done that. Uh, in the next video, we'll continue working inside of our get quotes method so we can extract the JSON object from our API. Okay. All right. I'll see you in the next video.